Sermon 49 of Leo the Great, Bishop of Rome, translated by Charles Let Felto. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Sermon 49 on Lent 9. 1. The Lenten fast is incumbent on all alike. On all days and seasons, indeed, dearly beloved, some marks of the divine goodness are set, and no part of the year is destitute of sacred mysteries, in order that, so long as proofs of our salvation meet us on all sides, we may the more eagerly accept the never-ceasing calls of God's mercy. But all that is bestowed on the restoration of human souls in the diverse works and gifts of grace is put before us more clearly and abundantly now, when no isolated portions of the faith are to be celebrated, but the whole together. For as the Easter festival approaches, the greatest and most binding of fasts is kept, and its observance is imposed on all the faithful without exception, because no one is so holy that he ought not to be holier, nor so devout that he might not be devouter. For who that is set in the uncertainty of this life can be found either exempt from temptation or free from fault? Who is there who would not wish for addition to his virtue or removal of his vice? Seeing that adversity does us harm and prosperity spoils us, and it is equally dangerous not to have what we want at all, and to have it in the fullest measure. There is a trap in the fullness of riches, a trap in the straits of poverty. The one lifts us up in pride, the other incites us to complaint. Health tries us, sickness tries us, so long as the one fosters carelessness and the other sadness. There is a snare in security, a snare in fear and it matters not whether the mind which is given over to earthly thoughts is taken up with pleasures or with cares, for it is equally unhealthy to languish under empty delights or to labor under racking anxiety. 2. The broad road is crowded, the narrow way of salvation nearly empty. And thus it is perfectly fulfilled that assurance of the truth by which we learn that narrow and steep is the way that leads to life and whilst the breadth of the way that leads to death is crowded with a large company, the steps are few of those that tread the path of safety. And wherefore is the left road more thronged than the right, save that the multitude is prone to worldly joys and carnal goods? And although that which it desires is short-lived and uncertain, yet men endure toil more willingly for the lust of pleasure than for love of virtue. Thus, while those who crave things visible are unnumbered, those who prefer the eternal to the temporal are hardly to be found. And, therefore, seeing that the blessed Apostle Paul says, The things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. The path of virtue lies hid in concealment to a certain extent, since by hope we are saved. And true faith loves that above all things, which it attains to without any intervention of the flesh. A great work and toil it is, then, to keep our wayward heart from all sin, and, with the numberless allurements of pleasure to snare it on all sides, not to let the vigor of the mind give way to any attack. Who toucheth pitch, and is not defiled thereby? Who is not weakened by the flesh? Who is not begrimed by the dust? Who, lastly, is of such purity is not to be polluted by those things without which one cannot live. For the divine teaching commands by the apostles' mouth that they who have wives should be as though they had none, and those that weep as though they wept not, and those that rejoice as though they rejoiced not, and those that buy as though they possessed not, and those that use this world as though they used it not. For the fashion of this world passeth away. Blessed, therefore, is the mind that passes the time of its pilgrimage in chaste sobriety, and loiters not in the things through which it has to walk, so that, as a stranger, rather than the possessor of its earthly abode, it may not be wanting in human affections, and yet rest on the divine promises. 3. Satan is incited to fresh efforts at this season of the year. And, dearly beloved, no season requires and bestows this fortune more than the present, when, by the observance of a special strictness, a habit is acquired which must be persevered in. For it is well known to you that this is the time when, throughout the world, the devil waxes furious, 
and the Christian army has to combat him, and any that have grown lukewarm and slothful, or that are absorbed in worldly cares, must now be furnished with spiritual armor, and their ardor kindled for the fray by the heavenly trumpet, inasmuch as he, through whose envy death came into the world, is now consumed with the strongest jealousy, and now tortured with the greatest vexation. For he sees whole tribes of the human race brought in afresh to the adoption of God's sons, and the offspring of the new birth multiplied through the virgin fertility of the church. He sees himself robbed of all his tyrannic power, and driven from the hearts of those he once possessed, while from either sex thousands of the old, the young, the middle-aged are snatched away from him, and no one is debarred by sin, either of his own or original, where justification is not paid for deserts, but simply given as a free gift. He sees, too, those that have lapsed, and have been deceived by his treacherous snares, washed in the tears of penitence, and, by the apostle's key unlocking the gates of mercy, admitted to the benefit of reconciliation. He feels, moreover, that the day of the Lord's passion is at hand, and that he is crushed by the power of that cross which in Christ, who was free from all debt of sin, was the world's ransom, and not the penalty of sin. 4. Self-examination by the standard of God's commands, the right occupation in Lent. And so, that the malice of the fretting foe may affect nothing by its rage, a keener devotion must be awakened to the performance of the divine commands, in order that we may enter on the season when all the mysteries of the divine mercy meet together with preparedness both of mind and body, invoking the guidance and help of God, that we may be strong to fulfill all things through Him, without whom we can do nothing. For the injunction is laid on us in order that we may seek the aid of Him who lays it. Nor must any one excuse himself by reason of his weakness, since he who has granted the will also gives the power, as the blessed Apostle James says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who giveth to all liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. Which of the faithful does not know what virtues he ought to cultivate, and what vices to fight against? Who is so partial, or so unskilled the judge of his own conscience, as not to know what ought to be removed, and what ought to be developed? Surely no one is so devoid of reason as not to understand the character of his mode of life, or not to know the secrets of his heart. Let him not then please himself in everything, nor judge himself according to the delights of the flesh, but place his every habit in the scale of the divine commands, where, some things being ordered to be done and others forbidden, he can examine himself in a true balance by weighing the actions of his life according to this standard. For the designing mercy of God has set up the brightest mirror in his commandments, wherein a man may see his mind's face, and realize its conformity or dissimilarity to God's image, with the specific purpose that, at least during the days of our redemption and restoration, we may throw off a while our carnal cares and restless occupations, and betake ourselves from earthly matters to heavenly. 5. Forgiveness of our own sins requires that we should forgive others. But, because, as it is written, in many things we all stumble, let the feeling of mercy be first aroused and the faults of others against us be forgotten, that we may not violate by any love of revenge that most holy compact to which we bind ourselves in the Lord's Prayer, and, when we say, Forgive us our debts as we also forgive our debtors, let us not be hard in forgiving because we must be possessed either with the desire for revenge or with the leniency of gentleness. And for man, who is ever exposed to the dangers of temptations, it is more to be desired that his own faults should not need punishment than that he should get the faults of others punished. And what is more suitable to the Christian faith than that not only in the church, but also in all men's homes, there should be forgiveness of sins? Let threats be laid aside, let bonds be loosed, for he who will not loose them will bind himself with them much more disastrously. For whatsoever one man resolves upon against another, 
he decrees against himself by his own terms. Whereas, blessed are the merciful, for God shall have mercy on them. And he is just and kind in his judgments, allowing some to be in the power of others to this end, that under fair government may be preserved both the profitableness of discipline and the kindliness of clemency, and that no one should dare to refuse that pardon to another's shortcomings which he wishes to receive for his own. 6. Reconciliation between enemies and almsgiving are also Lenten duties. Furthermore, as the Lord says that the peacemakers are blessed because they shall be called sons of God, let all discords and enmities be laid aside, and let no one think to have a share in the paschal feast that has neglected to restore brotherly peace. For with the Father on high, he that is not in charity with the brethren will not be reckoned in the number of his sons. Furthermore, in the distribution of alms and care of the poor, let our Christian fast times be fat and abound, and let each bestow on the weak and destitute those dainties which he denies himself. Let pains be taken that all may bless God with one mouth, and let him that gives some portion of his substance understand that he is a minister of the divine mercy. For God has placed the cause of the poor in the hand of the liberal man, that the sins which are washed away either by the waters of baptism or the tears of repentance may be also blotted out by almsgiving. For the scripture says, As water extinguisheth fire, so alms extinguish sin. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, and so forth. End of Sermon 49